Hi everybody and welcome back to Paws and Claws, The Lost Tales of Pugmire. I'm Jess, I'll be your guide today I, and every Tuesday. Uh, you might see me <laughs> down in the chat as Angry Nerd Girl. And without further ado, let's meet our wonderful dogs and cats, starting with Omega. You're wrong for that. Ah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Omega, also known as Critical Bard. Critical blah, 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 blah. Critical Bard across all social media channels. I am playing your mysterious oracle, Vincent Jackal. I always get to you last, and I didn't want you to feel like I was, you know, leaving you out or something. I was used to the process. <laughs> 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 Let's totally mix it up. Um, Alan Johnson. Hello, I am Alan C. Johnson. I am playing Grimly Greyhound, the lovable Greyhound. Lynn. Hi, everybody. I am Lynn Meyer, and I am playing Baguette Corgi, our shepherd who tries so hard. Cameron. Yeah, hi, hello. Uh, I'm Cameron Blair. Uh, I, uh, you can find me on Twitter on the handle below my face. Uh, I play Jean-Pierre Cachet uh, as a truly revolutionary cat. Uh, oui. <laughs> Honey. Hello, everyone. I'm Honey, a.k.a. Honey in Dice, and I play the magnificent Minister of Music, Miss Eartha Kitty. And Alan Engelson. Hello, oh, I'm Alan Ingelson. Uh I'm playing Mr. Tibbles, the honorable warrior. All right. Who wants to give me a previously on Paws and Claws? You know I got my notes. All right, let's do it. Um, I'm actually trying to write down notes more now. Um, I appreciate so... a player who takes notes. I <laughs> love that. Look, to be fair, I was not a player who takes notes. I kept them all in my head, but this is necessary. Uh, so we um, basically were on this ship for a while. Um, we started to, um, for lack of a better word, feel a sense of dread because of this gross weather. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, and with some talking and stuff, um, Grimly, JP, um, with some help from Baguette's knowledge, decide to finally put the lantern on the front of the Mer Mistress. Um, most people didn't couldn't tell what, how to do it or where exactly to do it. JP and Grimly wanted to put it in different places, but they finally decided to put it in the front. Um, once the lantern was set, um, and they were like surrounded by this weird fog and it's gross and it's uh, whatever. Once the lantern was set though, the fog finally parted like the Red Sea. Uh, so we can kind of see in front of us a little bit better. Um, uh, Grimly, uh, for some reason, goes to go um, look for Vincent to see if it actually worked. And Vincent called him an idiot in a good way. Uh, but he was like, yeah, it works. You didn't need my help for that. JP decided to try to analyze Vincent on that and be like, uh, you're just lonely and you need to uh, talk to people better. <laughs> And Vincent was like, you actually don't know shit, basically, right? And he was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, I thought so. So um, small level of respect that was born from that. Don't know how much, though. Anywho, for some reason, the spider go tried to charge to Vincent. I dodged. spider go don't like tension. Baguette went to go see Grimley about the compass um, just to figure out some more information about it. They ended up talking about Vincent because Vincent's an asshole. Tibble's been working out in spa and and he, he's been working out in his room and he wants to spar with Grimly for some reason. Earth has been trying to groom herself, sing songs, and be calm because it's been stressful <laughs> for Miss Kitty. Uh, Baguette finds JP um, to figure out compass business because, you know, JP had the compass. Um, they learned that basically you have to believe where you want to go and what you want to see and then the compass will show you. Um, and like, for example, he was like, where's the island? And it pointed to a certain way. And where's the captain? It pointed towards the captain. Um, JP found the captain and showed her this. Um, she didn't want to really want to believe him um, because, you know, he's on her shit list, but Baguette kind of backed him up. Um, then <laughs> JP realized there's storm clouds uh, coming and we're like, well, here we go. He goes to get <laughs> Eartha, gets the scroll. They gather everyone. 
Grimly, for some reason, forgot to put his plastic on, and we got hit with some acid. That was cool. Um, we uh, Eartha gets up with the scroll. Um, we saw like a tower in the distance. We saw some darkness and this little lightning, some wind and fog and stuff. Um, J- oh God, JP went to the captain. And was like, "All right, so we're gonna go to the island, and then we're gonna get back on this boat when we're done with the island." The captain was like, "Nah, we're gonna leave." And JP was like, "No." You're going to say. And she was like, no, I said what I said. And JP got really angry, looked at Eartha and basically was like, can I kill her? And Eartha was like, look, I get that you're the queen of this ship. But guess what, ma'am? I'm the queen of this group. And you're going to listen to us because we're trying to do what we got to do. And Vincent basically flew up to her, was also saying, you know, they could probably kill you if they wanted to. But we're not going to get to that point. We just are trying to survive. You need us just as much as we need you. The captain eventually says we have three sunsets to get back. After that, the ship is leaving without us. Um, Eartha then does the best version of cats I've ever seen in a long periodic time and summons her musical energy to cast the scroll of clear skies. It almost didn't work. Almost. But she got it. Uh, Baguette calls, uh, cast water walk. And we got the lantern. We all went to the island where we saw, like, it's made of plastic ships with a tower in the center. We see two other islands with no towers. They're all really, really big, and we're at the island. That's the end. Did I miss anything? I think that was pretty darn perfect, and that was totally yeah. worth a fortune. There you go. That's always one thing. That's always one thing from Eartha. <laughs> Grimly was eating some sandwiches. <laughs> Um, ah yes, this key plot point. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Tibbles was hitting them gains and got some um, music to help him out. Uh, that's those that the only two extra things. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> You know what? Because we're getting close to, because, uh, you know, you're somewhere new. I will add another fortune to the bowl for that. For sandwiches. The guide is kind. <laughs> and and Mr. Tibble's music. That, yeah, so I love Mr. Tibble's music. you have five in there. Ooh. Who knows? I might actually use one this time. I know. So... We left when you were just approaching the island, correct? Yes. Yeah. All right. Did we actually get to shore? I mm-hmm. feel like yeah. we did. Yeah. We got to shore. We got to shore, and yeah, that's where we left off. Yeah, just got there. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because Cam, because Debbie was like, "What is this island?" <laughs> and we we're like, "We'll find out later." Goodbye. <laughs> Sounds about right. So you take a few steps on to what is no longer water. And at first you feel like if you've ever stepped on a mangrove forest, you know how it's kind of like bouncy under your foot or maybe, I don't know if surfboards do this, if you stand on them and you like kind of feel the water beneath you, but you're sort of on, you feel the pressure of all of these piled up, crashed and sunken plastic ships holding you up, but you are no longer walking on the water. You are walking on what is close to like an iceberg of plastic. That's hmm. that's disturbing. That's a lot of plastic. Yeah. You hear the call of birds, but not like the kind of birds that you've met and made friends with. Just, you know, regular birds. And the sun is shining. Hmm. Not spooky, dark, and creepy. Sun is shining. Sun is shining. Well, Eartha did such a great job on dismissing the weather, so. Now do it. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, now that we're here, I guess bag- Baguette's eyes are really uh, wide open looking for 
things being a, you know, um, just trying to figure out where to go now that we're here, what to do. You can see off. Yeah, Jean Pierre's uh, kind of sitting in the back, waiting, hanging around Artha a lot, and like just head on a swivel. This is not his natural territory. Right. You see off in the distance, there's bright, colorful plastic for yards, and then it gives way to a sandy shore. And you see that's where this massive tower is stationed. Ooh. And far off in the sand, you see some rocky outcroppings. And it might just be a trick of the light, but there's some glimmering. And you see some movement up ahead. Well, um, Baguette just kind of turns and looks to everybody else. I think we might not be alone here. I mean, apart from the birds, but something's moving up there. Do you see that too? Do I see it? Can we see what it is from here? Right now, you just see a lot of flashing glints, like you're in a J.J. Abrams movie. And uh, with my passive, I don't see it either. Um, what is your passive? 16. Give me a notice check. Because that's a good passive. You see some flashing glints and some movement, but... That's fine. I don't see it. <laughs> okay. You see there's something, but it's hard to make out exactly what it is. But you agree with Baguette that you are not alone. Hmm. I can do some reconnaissance if necessary. <laughs> Might be a good idea. Anyone else who wants to take a closer look can give me a notice check as well. Yeah, sure. I'll go ahead. Grimley's this whole time since they've landed, Grimley's just looking between like mostly to Baguette because this is this is her business now. But... I I really hope my dice do better because I just rolled a two. I guarantee I don't see anything. Well, that is a thirteen. So uh, Jean, I Jean Pierre is also going to be looking just because he's. Looking around. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No. No. Okay. You're all blinded by the... Not, like, actually blinded. But I'll <laughs> say distracted by the brightness coming off of this tower. It's really bright. Like, you've seen some beautiful things in the monarchies and in Pugmire. And you've seen some neon things in Waterdog Port. But there's something about this that is almost calling to you. It's beautiful and it's very shiny. I'm going to um, um, extend my finger and tell Major to come to me and I'll touch Major on the nose as I cast Bless on him. Okay. Um, and then Major will fly out towards the, where we think we see something, kind of sticking to a shadowy, not really shadow, but kind of sticking low to not really be seen. Okay. Um, but he's translucent, he's, right? Well, for the most part. Excuse me. Um, let me go to the exact wording, so I'm not lying to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> what did I? Miss? What I guess missed something. It's a trap. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. He's he's <laughs> semi corporeal. So yeah, he's kind of in and out. Okay. How far out are you going to send him? I'm going to send him as far as I need to before I get... To. I'm going to go as far as I can, but he would stop if before that mark is something. He would try to stay like a little bit away from it. Okay. The mark. What? Sorry, you sold... You, we know that something's out there. Uh -huh. He would go towards it, and if it's within 100 feet, he would not get to that point. He would stop before he can get to it. Got it. But if it's past 100 feet, then he'll go as far as he can. Okay. But. It is past 100 feet, but he okay. will get on the sand. Not okay. like walking because he's yeah, floating. Yeah. Uh, give me a stealth check for Major, please. I can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, a sneak check. Uh, one day, 
you know, after two years of running this game, <laughs> I'll learn how to play it. Oh, one second. Sorry, one second. I just That's realized fine. I don't know a thing. Things that they could please let me know and update this thing with. Uh, okay, I believe it's just a plus two. Okay. Because they get my proficiency bonus, but they do they only get... They don't... It doesn't say they have their own, um, like, skills. Oh, no. But they have... But it, but they, it, but it specifically says they add my proficiency bonuses though, so it just confuses me. Oh, Anywho. okay, yeah, I think he just adds your proficiency bonus, but he doesn't have skills. Exactly. So. So that's weird. So I guess what should I roll a plus two or a plus seven if I'm trying to figure out? Uh, roll a plus two. That's, no, that's fine. I guess because it, he's not skilled. He's not. He's a little ghost bear. Oh. Uh, that's that's okay though. But I am um, blessed. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a dirty 20. Okay, cool. Nice. So, Major sneaks by unseen. Not unseen, but he is. Uh, ah. He succeeds <laughs> on sneaking. And um, he sees uh, several cats and um, one dog and many lizards all in kind of sandy colored robes. Some of them appear to be wearing brighter streaked robes, particularly the lizards that almost makes them blend in with um, the plastic from afar. And they're all milling around this tower, which major given what he, you know, remembers of the before times and just knows is made out of sea glass. Hmm. You said one cat, one dog, and a bunch of lizards? Mm-hmm. Okay. He will note that. Kind there of. may be more cats or dogs, but that's what he sees. To my problem. <laughs> um, he will um, flow back toward this. Uh, if that's all he sees. Um and he the birds are that. kind of like just flying around the the tower. No, uh, yeah, he will relay that to me, and I will. It looks like there are one cat, one dog, a bunch of lizards, and they're all surrounding the tower. Unsure as to why, but a thing to note. It's uh, sounds like a cult to me. Um, question for the guide. Would would uh, smell the unseen uh, work on them from this distance since I can kind of see? I can't see all the detail, but I can see them. Yeah, I was going to ask how far away you can smell the unseen. Well, what it says is the dog can smell the presence of any objects or beings that are invisible within her range of vision. Okay. As if they, as if they were normally visible. Cool. So. You... Don't smell the unseen from anything moving, but mm -hmm. that tower smells foul. Yeah, yeah, you'll you'll just see Baguette's snout just make this. Oh yeah, there's mm, unseen type foul. I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah, that tower, while beautiful, smells like decay and rot and old old death to you yeah and that's exactly how she'll phrase it to them it's just that's that oh wow yeah she's just like that's horrible but that's where we gotta go we just need You're to be smart about it having a moment over there it smells disgusting it it there's unseen stench coming off of it like terrible then uh i think is that is the place we are going to go and uh, make friends no as only we can make friends yes oh oh, uh, oh it's terrible well Should just we make sorry no forgive me vincent but uh is this uh our idea that we come here to help 
the unseen completes their mission, so they fuck off and never come back. I guess it depends on what their mission is. Well, this is what the big magical fish told uh, me and Snowball. I mean, if 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 the unseen say, "Oh, you know, kill everybody," I'm not going to do that. That's what I mean. It depends on what they ask, but if it makes them leave. I'm definitely willing to listen. Very well. Uh, it is time to put for me to put on my diplomacy face. Uh, Vincent, you were going to say something. Forgive me. Actually, that's a good segue. Do you want to be more diplomatic? Or wait, never mind. Um, actually, out of character really quickly. Did we find out that the sword that JP has helps him with charisma? Yes. And we knew that, I mean, mechanically, we don't know exactly how it works, but mechanically, the first time you speak to someone, you have advantage? Mm-hmm. Okay. On a charisma check with them. Yep. Yep. But just it's the, like, first, the yeah. first check. It's like a sort of good impre- Good first Yeah, it's like first impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, impression. for sure. I'm, I'm more so thinking of past that. Um, that's fine. Now I will look at JP. I know you have a new shiny toy, but would you like to be more charismatic or stronger? Well, <laughs> or more hardy? Ah, nothing in this world seems to be able to touch me, so uh, let us make it uh, more charismatic. The things in that tower are distinctly out of this world. I have fought those things before, and they only hit me once. Would you like to be as well, Becca? I can do this to two other people. Um, well, I if am If you not... need to speak to the unseen, at least. <sighs> yeah, I could use a little something, I think, because my impulse is to not be diplomatic with them. Um, I could probably use some charisma. Some Anyone charisma. else? I don't particularly care to speak to them. I don't think I will be necessary in that front. I could. My hammer does the talking for me. I'll, I'll take some hardiness. Um, then I will cast aid twice. I will cast it firstly on JP, Baguette, and might as well not waste it. I'll cast it on myself as well and give us Eagle Splendor, which gives us advantage on all charisma checks. Nice. Um, for an hour. Excellent. Um, and then I will cast it again and give Bear's Endurance to Eartha, um, Grimly, and Tibbles. You get advantage on Constitution checks, and you also will get uh, not bad. Nine temporary cinema stamina points. Heck yeah. I'll mark those numbers off. I'm not complain about that. All right, shall we begin? We, oui. I will um, lead the charge and- uh, Oh, wait, uh, you have bless. <laughs> oh, merci, Vincent. Ah, I don't want you getting killed yet. I like the way you sing. Uh, and then Jean-Pierre turns and uh, kind of like a half pirouette and starts walking towards the uh, cult fuckers. They don't fuck cults. <laughs> uh, Whatever. Grimley's just going to make a point of slowly edging to the back of the line for this one. <laughs> and Mr. Tibbles will slowly edge to the front. Okay. Good. I'm proud of you. Good. Yeah, Bad back, back just kind of welcomes Mr. Tibbles like a little, like, you know, pet, pet, like on, around the shoulder. Like, she respects that. He's so little and he's so fierce. It's amazing. Oh, good, good. I like, I like it. Um, okay. So, um, you walk on warm sand, um, and you feel just the beauty of this day. You've been on the acid sea for so long. And it's nice 
to feel, uh, you know, just something warm under your paws. Are you still wearing your full on like plastic protective gear? Uh, no, JP probably took some of it off and okay. put it in his pack. Yeah. Yeah, I think if we're, if, if the weather is clear and we're on semi-solid, you know, probably take that off. And as you move from the plastic to the sand, it feels more solid. Yeah. You no longer feel like the springiness under your paws, but you feel that you're on solid ground. Like this island of plastic has given way to an actual island. And you see little grasses and shrubs and you hear insects skittering around. And you get closer to the tower and now you see it's not entirely made of glass. It sits, it's glass, um, almost concave um a concave tower of glass and sitting in front of it is a stone table or altar with something like a scooped out i'm trying to describe something like a big bowl shape underneath <laughs> so you see like a table sitting in a big stone bowl and a concave glass tower rising out of it. Um, does this ping anything in Baguette's knowledge base about anything mystical, religious, etc. that she might know? Give me a no history check or yeah. No or history? No reli or no religion, either one. No religion is much higher. That's a I 28. Figured. Okay. That's a 28. You did not learn about this in the church, but there was some kind of facsimile of this in that weird magazine that Priscilla had. Huh. Okay. Now I have to try to think back. That basically that. was yeah. like, the unseen, where they come from, where to get them, hear me, hear, hear ye, hear ye, the, basically the inquirer that she had been yeah. reading. I can't, I can't believe it, but that... It that, didn't quite look like this, but it said there would be a table in a massive dog bowl. And that, it was proof that man was... 80 feet tall because he ate out of 80 foot bowls. <laughs> well, Priscilla's, and, and just Baguette will be musing out loud. It's like, well, Priscilla's magazine had, I think, some of its conclusions wrong, but I've seen something very similar to this. They, they had a, a, a rendering of it in her wackadoodle magazine that she was reading about the unseen. Huh. In her magazine, the glass went halfway around the bowl instead of just one okay. side. So huh. that has changed in some way. Okay. All right. The conspiracy theorists that she was reading about, you know, who put out that magazine, they said that that was proof that man was eight feet tall because they were eating out of this, you know, huge dog bowl. It, I don't Man was 100% not eight feet tall. I didn't think so. Well, but... could there have been some humans that were eight feet tall? Is it said 80, 80, oh, 80, 80, oh, 80, 80, 80 feet tall. 80 feet tall. No, they're uh, eight zero. Yeah, big. Eight zero. Yeah, but, but they had at least something very similar to the structure that they got kind of right. Oh, well, you know, I did hear about. Um, these things that the man used to watch uh, about uh, strange ancient monsters that would come out of the water and destroy cities, you know. Um, oh, those were just bedtime stories. That wouldn't help bedtime me sleep. Stories? Yes. Told to children so they wouldn't get too excited, too prideful 
the monsters were always there to knock him down. Oh, I thought it was uh, some sort of entertainment commentary on the use of, uh, you know, nuclear weapons testing on civilian populations or something <laughs> like that. But uh, that could have been, but not from what I understand. No. What's a nuclear weapon? I don't know. You don't want to know, actually. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, we seem to almost be uh, in front of these cults. So uh, uh, Jean-Pierre will uh, just walk up and be like, Hello! Knock on the door. <laughs> As you get closer, you see that a lot of the lizards are digging on the outskirts, but centered around the table is where Major saw an armored dog, a cat wearing gray robes, a gecko, and a large turtle. And it's those four that turn and look at you. The other lizards that are digging just kind of look up and are surprised and then all turn their heads to the four in the middle as if waiting Bonjour. to see how they'll react. Bonjour, uh, messieurs, mademoiselles, and uh, further, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, my name is Jean-Pierre Cachet. Uh, I have come to uh, parlay with you. The gecko steps forward, clasping his... Uh, I always want to say pause, but I feel like lizards have hands. I always say lizards have hands. So, pause. Claws. Yeah, clasping his claws together and skitters up to you on the sand. And he can walk much faster on this sand than you can. He bows in his robes and says, you've survived. You've made it to the chosen land. Welcome. Welcome. My name is Leomint Thunder's child. Uh, you are the child of Thunder's. It is impressive. Yes, and this, and he points to the turtle, it says is Myrtle Yurtle's child. No, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> Thunder's child and Yurtle. What? Myrtle Yurtle's child. Myrtle uh, Yurtle's child. He gestures to the cat and says, Cinders of the house von Simric. And the dog, who's kind of standing back, puts uh, her hand on the blunderbuss, or her paw, closer to the blunderbuss at her hip. And he says, Settle down. Settle down, I, potato. Do it's not okay. worry. Uh, Jean Pierre will. Uh take out the blunderbuss that he has and throw it onto the sand. Just so uh, we are clear about the, the parlay. At that, the dog um, removes her paw and says, tater tot Terry. Hold on. The dog's name is tater tot Terry. <laughs> Fuck <Yes>. you, Jess. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hey, I'm not being sensitive. It's a family name. Her full name is Potato Rat Terrier, but she goes by Tater Tot Terry. I didn't know I needed that, but thank you. <laughs> proud okay. of you, Jess, for that one. I'm proud of you. <laughs> all right. Anyway, okay. Well, it is a pleasure to meet all of you. Um, so. What are you all up to, huh? Uh, Leomed widens his claws. It says, well, what you are, I assume, only the true believers make it here. We're here I, to I, listen and to mm -hmm. observe mm -hmm. and to help them. Uh, help who? Uh, and Jean-Pierre, as he's asking this, raises his paw up in the signal and uh, makes a signal to Eartha to have a make a connection telepathically just so that he can start relaying mm -hmm. everything that he hears to everyone that is in the back. And she just quietly Peter Todd no 
And she's going to activate telepathic bond. Everyone gets added to the telepathic group chat. Uh, so, uh, who is it that we are uh, aiding? Hmm? And how are we aiding them? Will you call them? Well, forgive me, I don't know what you call them, but... Uh, the Unseen. Aha, so you've come to the Isle of Tears to hear the cries of the Unseen. Many of us came because we wanted to see if the lost Isle of Tears was really lost. But Apparently here not. is where we have been found. And at that, uh, the other lizards who have been digging just start bowing and nodding their heads. And Myrtle goes, yup. Very good, very good. Um, so. We hear their cries and we seek to understand what they want. For so you don't pain, know. pain, you see, we feel their pain. Sometimes they fly and they take one of these one of the devout, but what they want, they want to feel alive. They want to feel warm. They want to feel hope. So that is what we provide with our bodies, our minds and our spirits. And now you, are here with us. Welcome, welcome, new friends. Uh, so, uh, I have come as, as the emissary of our group to be a bit uh, frank with all of you. Uh, nice to meet you, Frank. Uh, no, my name is Jean-Pierre Cachet. If you were listening to my original introduction, you would know that I would uh, expect a little, little bit of respect, the same that I'm giving you, Tetrudat Perry, Sinders von Simric, Martha Jutter's child, and you, Liam and Thunderchild, huh? Liam, my mind is full of stories and webs. And a cat may have many names in one place. He may be no. Jean-Pierre Cachet, and in another, no. he may be Frank. No. And in yet another, he may be merely a common cat no or a cat of a common claw if it were but do just, go ahead just total ellipses in the group chat from Eartha just line after line of ellipses <laughs> Well, it seems that you know a little bit more about me than uh, I thought at first. So, let us be frank, uh, even more frank than uh, the name Frank. Uh, our initial mission was to come here uh, investigation, investigating. Uh, after that, we were here to kill all unseen that we could think of, to end the unseen, to destroy them. But at that, you hear a gasp come out from uh, pretty much everyone there. And uh, uh, Cinders. Before you interrupt me, <laughs> you did not let me finish my idea. Huh? <laughs> I was about to say that under counsel of a very powerful being, we have come to see if we can aid the unseen to end their presence in Pugmire. Because, as you said, they want to feel alive. And if they want to return to life in a peaceful way, we can aid that. That is what we are here for. But if your mission is to just have all of the unseen possess already living creatures, well, we'll have to find another way around that, won't we? Cinders steps forward and uh, says, you know, it's so nice to meet someone from the monarchies. And she uh, 
pulls her little pence nez up on her nose and looks at you a little bit closer. Jean-Pierre says, oh, you know, I don't believe we've met, but it is lovely to have another cat here. And you see she's a sphinx. So she's a hairless cat wearing gray robes. And so in my research, I came out here specifically to find the origin of the unseen. I'd like to study. I always want to study, as it were. It's the one thing that I appreciate more than a glossy robe. So I've found that the unseen were what plagued the old ones. Now, you know, dogs had this idea that, you know, you can pummel the unseen into the ground. But I believe that if you just give them a little bit, you can control them. And at that, the lizards kind of, you know, again, look, just not control, just harness their energy. Or um, by taking some of their power into your own power, you can combine it and Find out what they want. Converse with them by taking them inside of yourself. And that way, uh, really uh, learn. No, that's a bunch of bullshit. No one is going to be taking any uh, extra spirits inside of them. Let us, that is our first agreement. We. Oui? But you haven't tried, really. So we've been using... Ah, uh, you see, uh, and Jean-Pierre will take out a knife and balance the tip on, his, on, on one of his little beans. Uh, and we'll just say, ah, so you see, there's this wonderful thing I have called a dagger. Uh, you can find, uh, what is it, uh, enlightenment if I stab it into your temple. Uh, but you won't be able to try it until I actually do it. Does that sound like a good idea? No, it does, it does not. You are an intelligent cat. Use your goddamn brain. Just, well, see, the problem is that they want to feel, so they take bodies forcefully, and then the body rejects it. See, the body sees them as something to be destroyed. But what if the body welcomed them as something beneficial and we could create something new? So really quickly, uh, really quickly, <laughs> Eartha, your telepathic bond, we can just listen to each other? No, you or can talk it... and listen. It's a, like a, it's okay. literally a group chat. I mean, you can talk chat. to her, but you can talk No, no, to no, her. I know, yeah, I, I, that's how I was trying, that's how I was trying, yeah. I just say, what is the actual plan right now? Because it sounds like we are about to fight them. I have an idea. If this is about feelings. But Jean-Pierre, remember. To save the insults about the intelligence until after they actually like you I, I say I can feel that they already do trust me I am I am doing quite well I, mm, that's I, a word for it that's, <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah Eartha is thinking about all of this so basically and this is over the telepathic bond <laughs> basically the unseen are a bunch of crybabies having a perpetual tantrum and no one has been able to actually figure out what they want outside of either food, clothing, or comfort, just like a kitten or a puppy. Yeah. So instead they demand to use somebody else's body. And because that body recommend, you know, recognizes that that's not their child, it puts it back outside. Is that what I basically am hearing here? We oui. The unseen are crybabies having a tantrum. We. Oui. I've, I've never thought of it that way, but based on what I'm hearing, I don't think you're wrong. So, out of character, just so uh, Cameron is clear with this. A uh, little bit of theory crafting. Who's seen Star Trek Deep Space Nine? Long time okay. ago. <laughs> yeah. Are they so? There is a uh, a symbiotic alien species called the Trill. Oh right. That it's they're like a little worm that gets transplanted into another host body, usually a humanoid, uh, and it carries on that consciousness, but adds the 
host body's consciousness to the worm's consciousness. So it's uh, like the 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 character in Deep Space Nine is Dax. Yep. Uh, starts off as Curzon Dax, then goes to Jadzia Dax, and I forget the last Dax's name. Um, but is that basically what's going on? That the unseen possess a body, and if it accepts them, then it's just like, hey, I exist now. And if it rejects them, it's like oh, I'm a demon. I think it's close. It sounds closer to the Gaul, the Gaul from Stargate, where oh. they forcibly, you know force their way in. It's not like they ask permission. Yeah. Um, and then control the body. Only it seems in this particular case, completely out of character here, um, that it that the body can reject it. Unlike mm. the gold that just buries into your brainstem. What it what it sounds like to me is because we've seen unseen possess people, or we know that they can right. do it. Mm. But possession isn't ownership. Possession is just you trying to take over but they have the ability to let you go. I think it more so like supernatural. The angels, you have to say yes to them. And once you say yes, they can fully take over. And it sounds like they want to be again. So possession isn't permanent. They want something permanent. And they've learned or discovered that they can gain permanence through someone that is willing. That's what I'm hearing. That's that's honestly kind of how Baguette would hear it too. Um, yeah. I'm embarrassed because you just managed to list three separate shows that I've watched none of. So okay. I'm just nodding, I'm <laughs> nodding along like, uh-huh, yeah, this makes like, sense. I've never seen any of those shows, but I'm really interested. <laughs> this un- analogy makes perfect sense. In character, though, Eartha just thinks this is so extra. This is just <laughs> so this is too extra. Yeah, and Vincent just, I will not step in out of respect of John Pierre's work. Mm-hmm. But there are others who can also talk, so don't get us killed beforehand. <laughs> I am not being aggressive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, Baguette's listening to all of this intently, ma- making so many mental notes and, and trying to make connections in, in her brain. Um, but also, while that's happening, just kind of studying the cult aspects you know just like as others are listening to that conversation who's doing what you know all that because she's trying she's really trying to figure out just as a religious person as a religious dog i should say how how is this functioning based on you know i'm hearing this but what am i what can i grasp so like you know the meme of of the woman and all the math symbols are over her head right that's kind of baguette right now is she's processing everything that's around and, and being said. Tibbles, how are you taking all of this? Uh, Mr. Tibbles is just looking at the closest target. <laughs> so while, um, while Sanders is going on, on how, you know, if it's a give and take and all of this, uh, Myrtle has been slowly making her way up to Jean-Pierre and kind of pokes her head out of her shell. Is that two people or three people that are right up in front of Mm -hmm. Jean-Pierre? Mr. Tibbles is gonna step next to Jean-Pierre. Okay. And Vincent isn't far away from John Pierre, he's within fifteen feet. Okay, and Myrtle. Yeah, don't oh, go play ahead. That game. And what? No, that's it. I was just saying he don't play that game. Okay, he don't know. He's like, uh. Uh-uh. And Myrtle just puts uh, her claws on Cinder and says, "Or before Cinders came." with her thoughts, which we appreciate. We had been trying to guide those who cannot speak for themselves. Helping them remember 
who they loved. What it feels like to be loved through dialogue. And then she just pops her head into her shell <laughs> and takes oh. a few steps back. <laughs> that triggers all kinds of complicated emotions in Baguette. You have no idea. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. So what I am taking from all of this is that you want to help the unseen find their uh, their personhood in the bodies of other people. We oui? there's simple yes or no question. And tater top from far back says, "Well, that's what Cinders wants. Some of okay. us just want to help." Uh, what, help what? Help who? Help do what? Huh? I am getting three different uh, morals here. And Tater Tot says, look, I'm a simple dog. I'm a rat terrier. Good at finding. Leading the way. Found this island. I want to lead them home. Bothering people. I want to find out why. Okay. So, this is good. I'm finding out why. I want to help them go. So they don't hurt anybody anywhere else. Because I think they're hurting people. I think they're hurting dogs. And I think they're hurting cats. And I think they're hurting lizards and birds. Because they don't know any better. And because they're in pain. And when a puppy's in pain, it hurts itself. And it hurts anybody near it. They might not be puppies. They might be men. And they might be dogs. And they might be cats or something even older than any of us. But I can't leave something in pain once I found it. That cat's heart has just done all this stuff. And she's like, oh, I thought I knew what I wanted to do. And now I have. Oh, no. Oh. Is there an entrance to the tower? Or is this just the tower is not something that you enter? The tower is just like an obelisk. It's um, not something you enter. Okay. Well, they've been... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. It's like a you concave sheet of mm -hmm. glass. Okay, it's like a nobilisk, really wonky. Yeah. Um, Urza's going to walk forward, um, and she's just going to be studying the list very carefully. Mm -hmm. um, as she listens to all of this going on, and she's just going to say the core of it. She's going to speak out loud now for the first time. The core of all of this is feeling. And Leoman kind of looks at you and says, and pulls out a, a feathered quill from one of his massive robes. It says, it's the only thing worth writing about. It's the only thing worth singing about. But you can't hear a message unless they stop crying. So what brought you the Isle of Tears. I, you don't look like you're really, here to assist. Or are you? I have already told you why we are all here. Uh, really quickly, really quickly. Because mm -hmm. uh, y'all can talk for a while and I love it, but let me get this out real quick. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, while they were talking, I would want to have sense motive. Mm -hmm. I okay. want to see yeah. what they're getting into. Um, past, because they've all given different reasons. Yep. I want to see who is not telling the truth. And if I can, I would love to cash in one of those fortunes for this. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. I, I'm a dog. I have to ask. Yeah, that's you're an good. advantage. Oh, yeah, correct? I just gave you permission. Like, it matters okay. for me. That, that, that's an advantage, real correct? Mm hmm. Mm. Uh, great. That's who. Yeah. That's a 23. Okay. Right. So. 
you get that um, they have, um, sorry, I just saw something from my old notes and I was like, oh, that's kind of funny that I, uh, wow. yeah, okay, cool. Um, it was something that I changed. I was going to have a baby crack in here. <laughs> Yikes. But I'm not anymore. So, um, they're, uh, they're all working together, but... Like, you don't sense that anyone is lying. Like, all the reasons they've given you are why they're here. They all what? want Sorry. to help the unseen. But they also want to go about it in different ways. I guess what I really want to ascertain specifically is whenever they mention the unseen... Is there a level of their kind of not and not not enthralled, but like I'm trying to figure charmed. out how not even charmed, but how how much of this is them really caring about the unseen, and how much is how much of it sounds like it's just being recited? Like how how into it are they? Who's actually you know? Uh. It would appear that Leomond, the gecko, and Cinders are by far the most into it. And Yertle and the, don't tell me, and the cat. No, no, the and, and, and the dog are just like, eh, okay. I mean, Yertle is like kind of a helper turtle. And Yertle, uh, you get, since you rolled exceptionally well, um, I'll tell you, you get the vibe that Leomond is the leader here. No, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For yeah. sure. Felt that. He was the first one to talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, cool. But All right. if there was, like, a secondary in-charge person, it would, it would be, be the cat. It would be the cat. Yeah. Um, knowing this, I will telepathically, the turtle and the dog, you might be able to convince them. The others are too far gone. Convince them of what? I telepathically. I there are so many different points of view and what they want here. That is, uh, it's what strange taboo, to what see taboo, what. Sorry. No, you are fine. Uh, we have some that say they want to uh, help the unseen. We have some that say they want to just get everyone here out and protect other people. So there is uh, some very funny things going on here. I agree, and the fact that they're not of one accord does mean something. What that is is yet to be figured out, regardless. Uh, Go ahead. Mr. Tibbles is not going to speak in the group chat. He's <laughs> just going to ask, how long have you four been here? Lermond looks down at you. Not like looks down at you, but like is taller than you. <laughs> Like he has to look to he everybody. He has to look down at you because you're tiny. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> well, I came here in my youth. This island called to me. I sensed it that there was something out there, maybe. 30 years or more. Hmm. And Myrtle says, I was born here. And, uh, for anyone who heard that, I'm sorry. My Adobe has updated. Uh, <laughs> Cinders looks at you and says, Not that it's any of your information. Korak. But I've spent a few seasons here studying. And Tater Tot glares at Cinders and says, We came on the same boat. Apparently, you've been here long enough to forget basic manners. You don't refer to someone by their house. Anyways. 
Well, if I'd been introduced to him, maybe I would have known his name. I just used her for a dog voice because I'm stupid. <laughs> I am. There's too many NPCs on this island. <laughs> yeah. You made him. I know. Yeah. Um, Baguette's not going to say this out loud because she's still really processing, but she is going to say in the in the group chat, um, um, if if one was born here, what happened to their parents? I'm rather curious about that. I'm going to be completely honest. I do not remember all of your names because I didn't hear them that clearly and they don't come across, I'm sure, in the correct pronunciation when they filter through certain communication channels. But what I will say is we're here for answers. We're here to speak to the unseen to find out what they want. Apparently, some of you have been talking too long to the unseen. So how do you speak to the unseen? Uh, Leomend looks at you and says, you don't so much speak as you do listen and record. They call, and we write their stories. And when they come, we feel their pain. And Cinder's, it's nice to see someone who is um, actually making sense for a change. And uh, moves her glasses a little bit closer and says, so. I've been trying to speak to the Unseen, but in a different way, since they don't have a voice. So by merging my voice with their voice, I can ergo serve as a mouthpiece for them. And then they can speak through me together, almost like, um, like, you know, House Howler. Or, you know, if I were to be, well, instead of a mystic, if I were to be something like a minister, but for the unseen, you see. And then that way we could speak together with them. I guess doing the mental equivalent of a human cracking their knuckles, like, you know, she's kind of like, I'm willing to give this a listen, but if things go sideways, it's on, lady. You know, <laughs> like, she's... Okay. Mm. Eartha wants to try something because she's she's heard about the crying. She's heard about this or that. She's heard about various, you listen, you do this or that. You can't hear anything very clearly if people are having a tantrum. You just hear bits and pieces. So she's going to give Jean-Pierre a look, you know, that just means she's about to try something. Um, She's going to look to Mr. Tibbles and Grimly and says, I need you to be somewhere just in case they decide to pay a visit and some of our friends get a little bit frisky. And she's going to look between Baguette and Vincent. And I'm going to rely on your very unique skill sets to make sure that things don't go out of... will get out of hand. Okay. I'm going to slowly it. put a hand back and be like, I don't know if this is going to go bad. He just looks, he does a soft nod, and it'd be like to, to them, that's a really big nod. Like, uh huh. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, Mr. Tibbles is going to take this opportunity to take his Warhammer out, set it on the ground, and kind of step up onto it so he's at a higher, like, point looking closer to eye to eye with the uh, with the other cat and just say Mr. Tibbles all right and she's going to use projected towards the doggone tower of stanky death um <laughs> 
That's its <laughs> official name, actually. <laughs> um, she's actually going to use calm emotions. Okay. And she's just going to step forward and focus, because the lady talked about being a minister. Mm-hmm. So she's basically trying to see here on that register that emotional connection that ministers tap into she said she would be like a minister correct okay and she's tying things you know together if it's about feelings everything okay i hope so okay <laughs> okay. Just slowly just have to down. make sure that it's not in my apartment. Yes. Okay. She's um. In this certain day, we came here. And there's magic around everywhere. There are creatures crying. In a tower, I'm the unseen, just want to feel again. I may be right, I may be wrong, but all of this stuff is master. Possession's not an option here Cause the unseen just want to love again And you'll see all the the silvery energy and the musical notes floating um, As she focuses on the tower, kind of hands, you know, beside her Um And just putting her heart into, I know what it's like to want to be wanted. You know, I know what it's like to not be comfortable in your own skin, you know. Um, And she's basically going through all of her kitten memories and so on and pouring that into her singing. So were you casting that on the tower itself? Yes. Okay. Let me just check something. In that direction, if there's things on it, because stuff is unseen, so she's just like, well, right. but we they're know in... that there's there something there. So yeah, she knows that you smell something, so she is and, hoping. And the <laughs> nose knows. The nose knows. So what's the save for calm emotions, my dear? Um, I don't think, unless they're resisting, let me check. Mm-hmm. I got two if you need it. Okay. It's a charisma safe. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's each character within 20 feet of that, just so you know. Mm-hmm. Each character within 20 feet? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... You are not, and did you walk right up to the tower to sing that? She walked as close as she can to stay with like 10 feet back. Okay. Okay. I was just checking. So I was like, wait, you were further away than 20 mm-hmm. feet from the tower. Um, it has, cool. it has, it has a 60 foot range though. So she doesn't oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. It just has its own radius once you cast it. Like mm-hmm. shadow. What's your DC? What is my DC? Oh. I like math. Uh, <laughs> I think it is. I wrote this down and I've lost it. Oh no. Um. I think okay, it's sixteen. Sixteen. What? I think. What's okay. your um? What's your charisma? Plus, uh, my charisma is a fourteen, but I have a proficiency. So yeah, so that'd be that's two plus five, seven, fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. There we go. Fifteen. Okay. So you see um, the tower 
shimmers a little bit. And the rest of you see Cinders, the cat, get this calm look on her face as she starts to kind of do this along with the music. Um, from my experience of dealing with old things, mm -hmm. this isn't necessarily, Unseen is different. We have established that. But can I tell what's going on with the tower? Especially since that, that tower specifically is something old. So do you want to try and tell what it is? Or do you want to try and figure out what the shimmer is? I want to know what the shimmer is. I want okay. to know what's happening to it. I okay. do want to know what it is, but I want to specifically, I'm looking right now, what's happening to it. But I yeah. wouldn't want to know what it is. Okay. Um, if I can dig that out. Give me an arcana check. That sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works, works for me. me. That is, I have a plus four to that. That's a 19. Okay, cool. So you can tell that there are some invisible things hanging out on the tower. Mm -hmm. And that Eartha's song calmed down the invisible things. Um, two things. One, I would, my eye would just train on him for a second as I, because we're still technically telepathically linked right now, right? Or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would look at, I would, I get. Mm -hmm. Are those unseen on the tower? Are they different? I'm going to take a closer look and see if I can figure it out. <laughs> what do I see, guide? So, like I said, they are invisible. <laughs> right, but I mean, with the shimmering and... With the shimmering? Yeah, um, I remember in the museum they were invisible, but, but Baguette could but still sense it. you could still smell right. them. Yeah, yeah. We I had can, that specific I can... talk. Yeah, so, I can I can discern them as if they were not invisible, cool. basically. So high up atop the tower, you sense that there you saw some shimmering move upwards to okay. the top. And you smelled something that you smelled at the museum. Okay. There. Um, also still floating around in the general area. Um, not all of it left and went to the top, but you okay. can still sense that presence, but mm -hmm. it no longer seems, um, I was gonna say malignant and that's not the word I mean, malevolent. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, yeah. Earth is singing has put them in a better state, um, but some, some, not all have moved up to the top. Others are still where they were, but, but their mood seems to have improved. And then the second thing I'll do real quick and I'll pass it over. The second thing I'll do, knowing that, I'm going to place a hand on Eartha and I'm gonna let you decide, Jess, cause this is more flavor text. But we are telepathically bonded. Um, Eartha, the area around you is going to get a little cold. Like that shiver, even if you walk onto the summer, you just get that cold shift, like whatever was that. And if your eyes happen to look over, you will see little Claudia skipping over to you. Just la, 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 la. And she'll stop at you and just kind of go, mm, kitty. <laughs> and keep going. And the coldness doesn't leave as you gain death ward. Just in case, because you did something and I don't know if they like it. As she so, gained what? <laughs> death ward. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I thought you said as you gained death. And I was like, yeah, why would you ward. give that to your friend? <laughs> you're so, you're, 
you're protected by the ghost of man. Um, if you and drop to zero, perish. you will go to one <laughs> instead. This lasts for eight hours. Um, if the spell, if you're subject to a spell, a spell that will end you instantly, that spell is negated instead. So like like a disintegration or something. If that exists in here, you would it would not work on you. So Eartha is going to say in this the group chat. Just like when you calm a kitten or a puppy down, you've got a shorter period of time before they realize you're not giving them more milk. So, if you have a question, however you feel or write or however this complicated mess works, please ask it now. Uh, wait, are we killing people or are we still trying to make friends? I am so confused right now. I thought Jean- I was doing a good Jean-Pierre, job. Jean-Pierre, that's, I understand that your attention span. I'm singing a lullaby to the tower to calm the crying tantrum demon things down. Is this all still in your head? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. just checking. Because <laughs> yes. if you talk about killing people, they will have no. a reaction. <laughs> said, yeah. I've got everybody's nerves, for the most part, down. So if we could just go ahead and ask the questions, pay attention to how you feel. And yes, Jean-Pierre, you're going to have to think about your feelings. Just see what you pick up if you ask a question to the tower. Each person, prepare one question, please. Okay. All right. I think, you know what? Baguette Baguette hasn't said anything to the cult yet but she she really needs to know an answer to a simple question um and that's going to help her determine how she reacts because she's trying she's trying very hard um and she'll just kind of in past and kind of look to the cultists and my name is baguette i'm with the church and she's just gonna walk up and just ask the tower how can i help you and that takes a lot out of her to do that. But she's trying. She's just really directly asking the unseen, how can I help you? So you're asking the tower that? Yep. Okay. That's fun. Because honestly, she it's like everybody else has this idea, but she wants to hear from them. Okay. Um, so. Ooh. One of the calm things that was closer hmm. calm things like it's like becomes visible and you see it's a massive semi-corporeal dog with slavering jaws and it looks at you and says, no one helps so cold before turning invisible again. Mm. And then you see curled up in a little ball on the ground in front of you a glimmer of light becomes a cat wearing robes and she has runes all seared into her fur. She opens her eyes and you see purple fire instead of what eyes should be. That's disturbing. And her ears twitch and her whiskers tilt towards you. And she cocks her head 
sideways and says, Home. As she reaches her paw towards you. Uh, Before she turns invisible again and sinks back into the shimmer of the tower. Home. I want to go home. They want to go just like, relate yeah, to same. us via the group chat? Yeah, they want to go home. The first one just said, sadly, no one ever helps. And the other one wants to go home. Well, um, okay. Um, so it sounds like the cold could be wanting to not be cold anymore, could just be wanting to go home. So maybe we need to figure out where their home is. Maybe there is, maybe there are the cells of dead dogs and cats that uh, cannot go to the afterlife or wherever they go because there is a blockage. Right. Um, Again, while you're standing there, you start to see more of these placid shimmering things. And now they're not always dogs and cats. Sometimes they're lizards, but more and more of them look like Claudia, but older. Some of them look like man. Vincent perks all the way up. In what way? Like Claudia, but older than Claudia. There's dogs, there's cats, there's lizards, and then the ones that are like Claudia. I look back at Eartha. And y'all have never seen him really look confused. It's just not an emotion that he processes. He looks like, what the fuck? Um, and he looks back. Let's try something then. I'm all and ears. I will walk towards Baguette, hand still behind my face and head behind my back, keeping that facade up. Um, and I kind of look over at the the one the, the the turtle Yertle Myrtle, fucking Myrtle Yertle's child. I can't. Um, <laughs> and I walk towards Baguette and get next to her, and I clutch the eye of Major, close my eyes and start to hum. And I use my conduit of man to summon Claudia as the nurturer, which is one of the three I can do. Um, and she will be floating, skipping around me. Um, and also, if anybody I like is in within 30 feet of me and they heal, they will uh, get extra. <laughs> That's just the actual nice. thing they can do. But specifically, I want to see how they react to actually seeing man. And technically being affected by her presence. So Claudia is like an actual ghost, right? It's a spirit. It's a, yeah, it's a spirit of man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So some of them reach for Claudia. Mm-hmm. And you start to hear shouting almost of like, how, how, how are you free? And it gets loud and almost a little bit confusing. And you see the lizards start to express some concern. And now they're not quite as unified. And the rest of you can't see the unseen, um, but you can hear things and grimly you hear a voice right in your ear, almost like a wind blows your ear up. And you hear, come on, be a good doggy. Be a good doggy. Help, help me out. Help out. You want to be a good boy. Who's a good boy? Who's a good doggy? 
Who's a good doggy? Come I'm on. very uncomfortable about this. <laughs> so I feel like some primal grimly core is just like, I mean, yeah, I do want to be a good dog. But realistically, what he doesn't do, he just leaps like a foot in the air, just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> looks around like, ah, I, and then switches from verbal to group chat. Ah, uh, they're talking to me now. Is was that a spell? Did you do something? Don't listen. If they tell you to do something, eat some candy, go into the tower, anything. Don't listen. They are obviously dead. Not dead. Stuck in between. Just in general, don't do what dead people say. Uh, but they're telling me to be a good dog, so does that mean I should be a bad dog? We. <laughs> 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 Grimly, I think their judgment might be a little bit affected on what it means to be a good dog. Uh, Tibbles, you hear Fluffy Kitty, come here, little kitty. Come here, come here. Come on, help. Oh, I'm going to take such good care of you. Come on, come on. We're going to, oh, it's going to be so good. Could just come on. Let me, let me pet you. Come here. Let me give you some pets. Let me give you, oh, come here. Come on. Do I do I hear that from yes. one ear stronger than the other? Um, yes. I straight up swing towards where I'm hearing it. You don't not with my hammer, just with a fist. Okay. Um Tibble's got the right idea. Yeah, give me an attack. Because they're calm right now. They're not attacking you. Um, but I'll see they in my personal it. space. Is what, what they are in your is. personal space, so give me an attack roll. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh. Since this is with just my fist, would this just be like a straight roll plus strength? Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't get anything else. Uh, dirty 20. Okay. You really didn't like that voice in your <laughs> <laughs> So you feel your fist go through something cold. And if you want, you can give me a damage roll. I believe melee is just one. Okay. It's just an automatic one, if I remember the rules. Okay. Oh, right. It was when you were uh, With snowball, snowball that you could actually do like for reals damage. Yeah, I was a monk and I didn't do you anything to increase out. my melee. <laughs> Snowball was a monk? Yeah. Yeah, Snowball was a monk. He was a wanderer. <laughs> Go figure. Did not? Nope. <laughs> nope. Neither did I. Um, yep. And Baguette, you start seeing more and more of these things. What she's saying? You're such a good dog. You've done so well. Um, just keep being a good dog. Keep being a, just help, help out. Help I, oh yeah, Baguette's like, I, okay, I want to help put them at rest. I really, really want to, but there's so many and I don't, she's going to be racking her brain. Mechanically, it would be like, can I make a knowledge religion or a knowledge arcana to know if I have anything in my wheelhouse? that might do what they seem to want, short of letting them possess my friends mm -hmm. and me. Um, you can give me knowledge, religion, if you want. Meanwhile, Ursa, Jean-Pierre, give me, uh, and Vincent, if you want, you can give me a notice check since you're currently not being hassled by Unseen. Okay, that was a 31. Holy shit. I have a plus 12. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn. I, I took a trick. Oh, okay. I was like, I didn't think that was a thing. <laughs> I took a trick and it doubles my proficiency bonus uh, for two of my knowledge JP, skills. JP is technically still blessed, so you'll okay. have that until you use it. If you want to use it now. Uh, no, I'm okay. I got a dirty 20. Okay. What is a notice check? Perception. Wisdom, perception. Sorry. Um, I only get a 17. Okay. 14. Okay. So, Eartha and Vincent, you see that around 
the center of the tower, like up in the middle, a cloud is starting to form. Like storm clouds are coming out. Jean-Pierre, you also hear a skittering coming from that cloud, like bugs, like locusts almost. You don't see any locusts, but you hear like clicking, skittering sounds. And baguette, oh. this is nothing that you have ever dealt with. But from what you've studied of man and what you've talked to um, with Vincent, you know that possession is a bad plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. that that is not the way to go about this. Um, right. You might have heard Vincent talking about like unfinished business or something or old legends of the old ones of putting spirits to rest or myths about things being stuck when they couldn't pass on. Right, right. Um, hmm. It seems like this is a place of power and sending of some sort. Um, but things are getting trapped here for some reason. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm basically conveying that uh, in the group chat, um, you know, and, and trying to figure out, okay, this, 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 maybe there's something about the tower, maybe the tower is a conduit, but it's not working. Um, you know, I mean, I can, I can dis I can dispel unseen, but I can only do that one at a time, and and that's not necessarily going to help them go home. Um, so maybe how do we help them finish their business? I don't know. How do we help them move on? Well, we um, have a we each have a question, no? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jean Pierre will approach the tower and be like, Ah, how do we help you go home? Without you possessing us, huh? Uh, you sense Leomond behind you saying, if we knew that. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to them. Shut up. <laughs> uh, now, Jean-Pierre, you see coming down from the clouds two of those winged cats and a few winged what looks like bearded dragons uh -huh. as well. Almost like they are dragons mm -hmm. uh, flying down from the top of the tower. They're not angry. Uh -huh. They break through the cloud and they look at you and kind of cock their head. Are you here to answer my question? And one of the beardies kind of scuttles up to you and just says, Lost. And one of the uh, winged cats, who now that it's landed, it lands with a thud and it tries to move closer to you and you see it sinking into the sand as it walks. And it goes... How long does okay. calm emotions work? A couple minutes? A minute? Calm emotions works for... Jesus Christ. Um, this is why I don't like spellcasters, because I gotta look up everything. Um, calm emotions, it... It's over. I mean, people okay. are still going to, you know, feel whatever they're going to feel because it calmed people down, but it's not mm. going to keep them permanently calm. Got it. It's like a, a shot of lavender and chamomile and everyone's kind of chill. <laughs> Got it. Um, but yeah, she's... You suppress strong emotions. Got it. Yeah. Up to one minute. Cool. Um, by the way, while people, while, while, while the others are asking their questions, can I get, get a closer look at the bowl, maybe? Mm -hmm try to figure out if there's something about that. If this is an artifact from the time of the old ones. I don't necessarily believe what I read in Priscilla's magazine about it. <laughs> Why? 
call, call, call me just you know, distrusting. Um, but I'd like to understand that a little bit more while everybody's asking their questions. Okay. Clarification. Uh, Did Jean Pierre's one say lost? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So uh, Jean Pierre, in his frustration of uh, basically bullshit answers, not actually answering the question, just being super vague, is going to take out the compass. Uh, and concentrate on the thought of what is keeping them from going where they need to be. Ooh, if it's something physical. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if, it, if it's, sorry, go ahead, Lynn. No, I was just going to say that's kind of what Baguette is thinking. Like, is there, a, like, if something was sort of magically, physically wrong with the structure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If, yeah, if something is actually like a physical blockage then we have to go in and do it and like get rid of it yeah i really like that thought um you hold it and the compass spins in your hand it slows down at each demon that's presented itself to you but it doesn't point at any of them. It just continues to spin and you don't feel that vibration or spark that you felt in the past when it was like, this is the thing. Okay. So. Well, uh, that did not work. Um, so in the group chat, uh, <laughs> It's just, uh, well, it looks like uh, the thing that is keeping them here might be inside of them, each of one of them. So they were probably just shitty people. <laughs> or and, they left. Uh, and they died. And uh, hell shut them out, and so did heaven. <laughs> so. <laughs> fuck. Vincent, Vincent, I, I don't remember correctly, but I know we've talked about the old ones. Was based on your um, understanding. Um, if they, it, it, even if they weren't all shitty people, which they might have been, but could it be that they just left something undone? Am I remembering that correctly? Sometimes, from my understanding, there are those who cannot pass on. However, this seems more than that because this is not just affecting man this is yeah. affecting us therefore it's not as if there is something they haven't done right i actually am inclined to go along with jean pierre they might have just been bad people because there's also lizards and dogs and and the worse you are, I assume not all of us become unseen when we die. No. So there must be a reason. They might be unsavable. Do you Everybody's... know you don't become unseen when you die? Well, Beckett's belief is that we don't. It's not what the church told her. All right. Well, the is just going to go and live between Grimley and Tibbles because they had some, they looked like they were affected, like jumping would, and stuff. And I would so, say at this point, like, Mr. Tibbles is like trying to go as much as Mr. Tibbles can uh, back to back with Grimley, just since we're both hearing voices. Yeah, there, there's yeah. voices going this whole dang time, by the way. I didn't want to interrupt, but. Yeah. I would say if anybody I else has I just want to questions. confirm for anyone watching that Grimley is just under seven feet tall and Tibbles is about four and a half feet tall. Yeah. So them going back to back is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Rosa will check in with them and just look at each one to make sure they're okay. Yeah, that's that's why I asked Jess, are we, are we still hearing voices? Have we been this whole time or when they... Unseen started popping up and all the You don't hear voices anymore. In fact, they start once um 
you both made it clear that you weren't going to kitty let them you know possess you mm -hmm. um you hear the voices heading back tower words and Baguette, you smell something a little bit different about the dog, cat, and lizard-shaped ones than the human-shaped ones. But all of you hear these sounds heading back towards the tower, which is just starting to take on its characteristic shimmer again. Though now you can all see that cloud is embiggening. <laughs> embiggen. Just FYI... The ones that look like man smell a little different. I don't know why. Just a little. Okay, then in answer to Earth, uh, Grimley's just going to look at that one and be like, uh, I think we're okay. So now we know that they want to be inside of us or free. Do we need to help them or do we need to get rid of them? And I'm just going to look at the people here. And Can we see all like the, the beardies and all that still? Big cloud. Um, you see them retreating. They're starting okay. to fly back as well. All right, that's what I thought. Like, they're and not fighting you, that? but they're no longer, like, you're not talking to them. Yeah. And they're, uh, realizing they're not going to get much out of I you. Yeah. And they're also, uh, they prefer nighttime and it's not like high noon anymore, but it's still daytime. <laughs> Thank God for that. Have I been able to uh, discern anything upon closer inspection of the bowl? Okay. The bowl is... So what were you trying to discern about it exactly? Like well, what it was for? Yeah, like what was it? I don't necessarily think it's a big dog bowl, dog food bowl. Um, but what, what is purpose is or was um, primarily? Okay. Give me an Arcana check. That's a 28. Okay. You, if you stand in the bowl or get close to the bowl. So first, right off, you can tell that the bowl and the glass are from the same age. The table was okay. built later. Okay. The table is a new addition. Okay. The glass and the bowl or two different materials, obviously, but the table is new and you sense magic energy coming off of the bowl itself. Like this is some kind of ancient communication device. Uh, I'm, I'm relaying that as I'm making the observations, I'm relaying that in the group chat. Or an ancient artifact for sending information. Yeah. So yeah, there's. Oh, if we, if Priscilla were here, she'd be. Oh, she's gonna be mad. She missed this. Um, Vincent, thoughts. Eartha, thoughts. I mean. I have a thought, but I don't know if it's what people want to hear. Hmm. And I look at Vince. I look at Vincent. Yeah, I look at myself because I'm that beat. We're looking um, at you. <laughs> I I look at Eartha. I look at myself, and myself said yes. Yep. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can actually how we currently use the word aid the unseen. I do not believe we can allow them to possess or be what they wish without disrupting what it is now, what is now. And aiding could mean putting them to rest. Or showing but, them the way home. Or showing them the way home. Yeah. So we have options, more like two options. Do we destroy or do we Show them the way. Perhaps we can take a break, because it looks like they're taking a break as well. Um, I'm still burnt from us trying to get off that ship. So if we could take a small little break as they regroup into the Tower of 
hell, we can come up with a plan. Um, that was a lot. There's a lot to process. And then poor Mr. Tibbles and Grimley have been apparently approached because they're that good looking. And uh, Jean-Pierre is coming to realization that reality is indeed stranger than fiction. Um, and I just sing a lullaby to a tower of undead trapped souls and somehow summoned dragons and cat bats. I, I believe that one was me. I did that one. Oh, yes. Okay, I will let you own that. <laughs> Happily. I'm, ju I'm just trying to put blame where blame is due, you know? Wonderful. Uh oh. <gasps> Oh no! The unseen. They have baguette. <laughs> the unseen. Baguette left with the unseen. <laughs> well, could be the weather. Yeah, I hope she's okay. I'll try and fix this real quick. And oh, no. Uh... <laughs> oh no. Okay. Well, like I said, a break. <laughs> <laughs> And that's a good place we can leave off of day now. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Thanks for watching. Pause and class. Just for my own notes, what you're explaining to Baguette is that the little deep dish thing seemed to be communication array of some sort, some ancient communication array. Yes. Um, okay. I have magic bowl cell phone satellite. Anyone who doesn't like <laughs> Anyone who doesn't like deep dish unseen or wrong. Who uh, like let's deep dish let's unseen? not get in this fight right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we only have like five minutes left uh, before we have to start saying goodbye. So you definitely don't want this fight, especially not when we're missing a baguette. Um, I'm trying to bring us up real quick to fix this. Sorry, friends. There you. Huh? Uh, while we are paused, uh, thank you, Heartbeat Dice. These dice have been wonderful for me right now. Uh, yay! Yeah, Heartbeat Dice sent us some dice. Uh, their their pride uh, collection. So, thank you. They're wonderful. Absolutely gorgeous in the uh, nice little. Oh, nice. What kind did you get? Nice. Uh, I got the uh, buy dice. Bye. Heck yeah! That's my uh -oh. dice too. Oh, as if ace people weren't already awesome. Their dice are awesome. I know the ace dice are so pretty. Okay, um, this won't have our like handles on it, but I'm gonna do a switch so that you can see us. There we go. It's hideous, but that's what it is right now. Oh, I have two <laughs> Allens there. Let's fix that. <laughs> I mean, there are two Allens. I yeah, but that's not what we want. <laughs> All right. Um, let me fix that. I have two of the same Allens, so I just got uh my Allen confused. There we go. There One we of go. Us only tells truths. The other is pretty hideous, lies. but we can finish like this. Uh. So. Um. The clouds are roiling above you. And what other thoughts do you have? It is going to pull like a small blanket looking thing out of her bag, shake it out, put it down on the sand, smooth it up, and then have a seat. <laughs> and she just takes a lean and stares at the tower. Like this is... Mm. Uh, Grimley's still taking looks between Earth and the gang and said rapidly large in embiggening cloud above us. Yeah, like, now you can all start to hear the skittering sound. Mm -hmm. And Grimley just keeps looking that way. He's like, I I feel like we should be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a, a wizardy, magical talking to the dead sort of person, but do you hear that? Uh, mm -hmm. 
Mr. Tibbles is just gonna look over to correct me if I got this name if I get this name wrong. Tater Tot. Yes. Uh, yep, that's right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Cameron hates uh, me so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and just just ask. What are we hearing? Tater Tot looks down at her paws and says, well, you must have angered the tower because that's, uh, that's the death hearse. I'm sorry, the what? Oh, don't worry. They usually take a lizard. They shouldn't be after you. Uh, so far, you know, I keep them at bay. I can protect you. But, um, yeah, that's the death hearse. I wouldn't worry too much about it. But, you know, <laughs> you're new here, so they do, they do like to go after new folks. So I, I, you might have a concern. Ah, a very good. Of What's course it? there are. Yep, death hearse. Of course, that's par for the course. No, a death um, hearse. Death hearse. Death hearse. I, hey, what's uh, Peppers? Yeah. Anyone know? Have you no. ever heard of that? Um, I'll say Vincent Jean Pierre. Actually, everybody here except Grimly has probably heard of a death hearse. Mm -hmm. Yay! History. Uh, give Arcana, me his. What do you want? Um, Arc. Or history. I'm gonna bless myself. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, not bad. Is that wisdom or intelligence? Intelligence. Nineteen. Yeah, you definitely know what that I should was. be more or less worried that Grimley has twenty two. Okay. Sorry. I'm Fifteen. Trying. Okay. So, um, this is something that's why cats say to go inside on a cloudy day. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's a cat thing, Grimly. Mm -hmm. Making that face at me. That's why cats don't like cloudy days. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just dead beaten. I know everything, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vincent, you know it because you like hanging out with uh, dead people. Uh, Fair. And Jean-Pierre, um, you and Eartha have heard of this. You know that on a cloudy day, you watch the skies for the death hearse. Very the good. death hearse rides in the fog and picks up those, hey, look, it's our names, uh, to whisk them off to places unknown. Fuck. And, and that's where we'll leave tonight's episode. Hey, hey wait, that sounds bad. <laughs> so, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, I'm Jess. It is great being back, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's under my name. I love running this, and join us next week when we see what the death hearse and more of the unseen bring. So let's meet our cats and dogs and see where you can see them, starting with Eartha Kitty. Mm. I am Eartha Kitty. Which means I'm honey and ice, and I'm just trying to stop laughing because kill, kill me. We got hey, uh, honey, really quickly, look at the uh, look at our chat. But well, continue, just say now. Okay, um, I'm honey, aka honey and dice. You can find me on Twitter at honey and dice. I also have an Instagram that's at honey and dice, but I don't post anything there. I just didn't want anyone else to take the name. I am a DM, GM, storyteller, and apparently a Care Bear. I don't know. There's been all kinds of stuff going on this week and whatever. Um, I want to remind everyone to make sure you're changing your passwords, especially in very hectic times like this. People are always trying it. Um, 
Also be very, 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 very wary of um, messages from your banking institutions or loan institutions and so on, or even PayPal about things that really shouldn't be, including password changes, attempts, or refunds, because they're, they've upped phishing scams quite a bit right now as well. Because I'm a cybersecurity professional when I'm not playing games with people. Um, outside of that, I just want everyone to remember to love your you, stay safe, stay hydrated. Um, and if you're having a hard time today, you know, with everything going on and so on, just remember that I love you and it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to be okay. And don't let anyone else tell you that you should or shouldn't be okay based on whether or not they're okay. So, much love. Grimly Greyhound, who are you? Where can we find you? Hello there, I am the player of Grimly Greyhound, Alan C. Johnson. You can find me on Twitter at Narlo Jenkins, where I do writing, voice work, and all other sorts of fun stuff. I haven't for the last couple of weeks because it's been a time, but I'm getting back to it. Mr. Tibbles, who are you? Where can we find you? Hello, I'm Alan Ingleson. Uh, I really don't have any social media anymore, uh, but I just really like to play games and I, I, I like to play test and help make things as best as they can be. Uh, Jean-Pierre, who are you? Where can we find you? Hello, uh, my name is Cameron Blair. Uh, I am a, a tabletop role-playing game uh, player, as you can see from this stream. Uh, writer, creator. Uh, you can find me at the Twitter handle below, uh, where right now I'm almost 100% political Twitter uh, because fucking Black Lives Matter. Uh, all, caps, all cops are bastards. Uh, trans rights are human rights. It's, it's a lot, but yeah. Uh, so that's where you can find me. And Vincent, who are you? Where can we find you? Hi, again, I'm Omega, also known as the Critical Bar, Critical Bar across all social media channels. I am also somewhat political, somewhat very angry. Mostly gives me being a black man living in this damn time. So, talking real. Uh, but yeah, very happy to be here with you all. Um, the biggest thing I wanted to hit at is tomorrow on my channel, twist.tv under slash critical bard underscore you can catch myself you can catch honey and dice you can catch Scythe of tear christina ariel swords fall brandon nixon michael critz and gabe james games as we host um part two of the hashtag black af roundtable which is a time where black creators a, a small amount of black creators in the community just talk about the realities of racism within the ttrpg and DD &D community uh, we talk about some real shit. Um, we had a first one. It was a blast. We have another one tomorrow. It is going to be at 11 Pacific, 1 Central, 2 Eastern. Um, it is going to be on the front page of Twitch as well. Um, it is a three-hour roundtable. So if you can stop in and listen to some real stuff, please do. Please, please, please do. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you. Stay tuned for Legend Lore. Have a great night. Mwah. Bye, everybody. See you.